I did a lot of research. I wanted to do something last year already uh, because my Mac Mini, which is over here, somewhere there, yeah, this one, it's from 2012. And the problem is it lacks a decent performance nowadays, especially for video encoding and cutting in 4K especially. And also it is not that capable anymore of handling a lot of stuff in parallel, even though it's okay. Therefore I decided to build a new PC, a Hackintosh basically. And I researched a lot. I will put a link in the description on the parts I have chosen and also on an article where it's described how to build the Hackintosh. And this is just one video of an episode because I wanted to uh, do videos on this part or this topic on really how to do it uh, in detail because it's quite a complicated topic and therefore I wanted to go as in-depth as possible and also as not that technical as possible and to just give some sort of diary on how to build a Hackintosh. Today is what parts I have chosen and why. Um, so let's just begin. Maybe with the exterior. So the first thing I've chosen is a case, of course. I've chosen the Fractal Meshify C because of airflow and because of my peripherals I will put in there. Um, I will come to this at the next point. And I think as I wanted to have a quite capable machine for a lot of stuff like dual booting Windows and Mac as well as um, running more performance hungry coding tasks as well as video cutting and encoding and of course I'm a person of the 1000 tabs at once open therefore I needed a machine which is quite capable of running this and my current Mac mini has a processor an i7 3770 or so so roughly it's an i7 with the four cores and 2.3 gigahertz each core and it worked quite well and therefore I've chosen a CPU which is at least capable of having the same or which has at least the same amount of cores and I ended up with wait a second with the next generation even though the 7700k was uh, recommended by a lot of forums I have chosen the Core i7-8700k because I want to overclock it or undervolt it don't know yet which route to go this has 6 cores and 12 threads or hyper threads and that's somehow a step upwards from my current setup uh, second of all, um, I have chosen a more expensive mainboard. It's the Maximus X Hero with the Wi Fi adapter included already on the mainboard. So I don't have to spend additional money on the Wi Fi card as well and block any PCI slots. Therefore, I've chosen this, and it's quite popular in the Hackintosh community because it's very easy to install and you don't have to mess around a lot. And of course, for overclocking, this is quite capable because it can deliver better voltages uh, or stable voltages and higher voltages as well. Everything needs cooling, therefore I've chosen the Noctua fans. I wanted to go originally with the route of water cooling and IO cooling like the NZXT X62, something like that, a quite capable water cooling solution. But as it's not supported yet by macOS and a bit tricky to set up, I decided to go the easy route with a air cooling solution and Noctua is quite famous for um, quite fans and also for a very good cooling uh, performance. And I have chosen the NHD15S, that's uh, nearly the same version as the NH15, just with one fan less and therefore a bit quieter of course and also with an asymmetrical design because uh, I read a lot of forums or articles and 
saw a lot of videos where they said, okay, uh, nice cooler, but you have to take care of the RAM slots that they are not blocking the cooler or vice versa. So therefore I've chosen this one for the asymmetrical design and I think it should be quite capable of handling the i7, hopefully. Um, next one, RAM. That was a bit tricky, but as I have already in my 2012 uh, Mac Mini 16GB of RAM, I have decided to go the route with a 32GB RAM kit, the Ballistic Sport. Um, they are clocked at 2400 MHz, so I think quite a standard kit and um, also not that high profile, so they are a bit lower and they should work with the cooler on the mainboard. And I decided to go the NVMe route as it's now natively supported with Mac OS High Sierra and also with a modern mainboards uh, it's quite standard and for high performance stuff like shifting huge files. I've decided to go with the Samsung 960 Evo M.2 drive, uh, should be somewhere around 1.6-1.8 gigabyte byte per second and a uh, second one du for dual boot uh, 250 gigabytes and this is 500 gigabytes um, for Windows 10 then because I also want to uh, do a bit of my stuff in Windows as well and just get to know the system a bit again and maybe sometime uh, also a bit of casual gaming but that's not the main focus of this workstation. Of course every workstation needs a power adapter. I've gone the route with the um, Straight power 11, 650 watt. I think that should be sufficient enough for even for overclocking and one uh, GPU. Uh, so therefore I've chosen this. It's a 80 plus gold modular power supply. Um, yeah, and I think that's quite good because I've gone the modular route because of uh, cable management and I just want to plug everything in there which is just necessary and nothing more. Of course there's a integrated GPU, the i670 or 630 UHD, um, but as my Mac Mini already has an integrated graphics card uh, on the CPU and it's really not that powerful, I decided to go with the uh, Sapphire Pulse Radeon RX 580. It's a reference GPU from AMD and I read on the forums that this is uh, shipped with external casings for eGPU support on all the MacBooks for example or just on on all the uh, Macs and um, therefore I think this makes most sense because it's native supported and also the RX 580 should be supported at least from Mac OS 10.13.4 or so and as Mac OS of course is uh, always teaming up with AMD the last couple of years besides the NVIDIA route from 2008 to 2012, something like that. Um, it's of course beneficial to have an AMD GPU in your Mac or Hackintosh um, nowadays to have native GPU support for Final Cut Pro for example and for motion for uh, compressor and also of course the uh, native metal support from the OS. Uh, but last but not least, um, I've decided to, of course, uh, as mentioned, overclock the uh, CPU. I've purchased first of all from Thermal Grizzly, uh, Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, that's a thermal uh, paste for uh, the CPU. Also I've purchased uh, Liquid Metal Conductor Nod by Thermal Grizzly, so I had quite good ratings. And I want to just deal it the CPU uh, after I've tested if it's running overall and uh, then just overclock it or undervolt it so just to get better uh, thermal um, performance somehow and not run into thermal throttling problems as you would when you just stick with the toothpaste which is originally applied from Intel onto the uh, die. I have purchased this uh, silicon modified conformal coating from eBay just to uh, get an insulation layer or isolation layer um, onto the uh, CPU when I uh, yeah, apply this uh, conductor knot liquid metal stuff and also some uh, high temperature silicon uh, glue which is then used to just put back the heat spreader onto the die. And 
I am still waiting for, yeah, still waiting for the dealer tour. Um, hopefully it arrives soon so that I can do this. I will also do a video on this. So and last but not least, I've purchased this small Broadcom uh, Wi-Fi Bluetooth adapter, which I will put onto the motherboard uh, and replace it with the Intel one because that should be mostly compatible with um, the one by, uh, used by a lot of Macs and, and this should be capable of uh, being nearly running out of the box and just uh, change some texts and also not blocking any PCIe slot. Um, who knows what's up in the future. Okay, that's it for this video. Next parts I will have to just scroll through the manuals. It's since 2001 since I built my last PC and since 2007 or 6 since I last modified the PC and then I switched over in 2007 to the uh, Mac user group and was just running MacBooks and this Mac Mini. And therefore um, I'm quite pumped for building a PC again after roughly 10 to 15 years and a lot of stuff happened but I think a lot of stuff is also still the same. Give me a like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, uh, maybe subscribe for upcoming uh, videos on this Hackintosh topic, also on other topics of course. But uh, this will be one big part of videos, how I put this stuff together, how it performs, um, what are my um, yeah, thoughts and also experiences of building the Hackintosh and setting everything up. And yeah, pumped! See you!